So Ray asked me to, to give a talk on this, and we had just published this in AJSM, a big meta-analysis, and it was a big Twitter stir. And other, I'm, I'm not like the president. I don't even have my own Twitter account. Somebody manages it for me. I don't know how to log in, but I guess that was a big deal. So I wanted to kind of bring this up and, and some of the information that's here because we tell our patients that we want to do ACL reconstructions to prevent arthritis, but are we really doing that? So my disclosures again. And I think part of it, we have to look at the technique changes. Remember, we had open techniques and two incision techniques, which predominated in 1980s. And then the endoscopic transtibial technique came out in 1991 and was pretty much all that was done until 2007. Then Freddie Fu came along and he won the Kappa Delta Award for this work on this, where he showed that the ACL has a much different attachment site and we're actually not putting it on the femur in the correct position. So 2007 to present, most people are transitioning over to the independent femoral and tibial tunnel reaming, whether it's an AM portal or using some other way to um, ream the tunnel, but it's not going through the tibia anymore. And so we have to look at that also when we're looking at these studies. And why were the techniques changed? One of them was because they were non-anatomic, as Freddie showed. And also the central graft didn't really control rotation. So we report on studies, and the KT1000 data was great. But unfortunately, as Min Coker and Dr. Stedman showed, it's the pivot shift that actually makes patients have functional instability. It's not the ATT. And then we were seeing increased rates of osteoarthritis and meniscus tears with what we thought were well done ACLs. And you can see in that x-ray there, the results of a very central and um, ant anteriorly placed femoral tunnel in this patient with all the arthritis. Um, ACL reconstructions now are the six most common orthopedic surgery oral boards. Uh, procedure that's done. And within the last couple of years, the numbers have come out. It's roughly 300,000 a year in the U.S. So it's gone up dramatically in terms of what we're doing for ACL reconstructions. And what we're worried about with ACL reconstructions is that they're in young patients. So it results in post-traumatic osteoarthritis when they have these injuries. And what happens? It's been estimated there's 5.6 million cases of PTOA, and the overall annual cost is $55 billion. So it's pretty significant in terms of the overall cost, and it's a lot more than many of the other pathologies that are generating healthcare dollars out there. This is something that's potentially uh, preventable, and it's causing a lot of drain on the economy. What are the risk factors? Um, one is meniscectomy, also articular cartilage injuries, but failed ACL reconstructions with residual instability are a huge cause of it. And in any series, we're looking at anywhere from 5% to 15% where ACLs fail, and those patients have a very high risk of developing osteoarthritis. So what does the literature show for PTOA? We had our meta-analysis. We looked at 4,100 patients. At five years, 11% of patients had it. When you get out to 20 years, 51% of patients have osteoarthritis. And that's an average of 40 years old. So when they tear their ACL, and they're very innocent in their teenage years, they don't worry about what's going to happen. Just take the meniscus out. Don't fix it. I want to get back and play, doc. Well, by the time they're 40, they're having significant functional limitations, and that's a, a big problem that, that's been identified. The other thing is the chronicity of an ACL preoperatively. So our Scandinavian friends tell us we should send them for rehab, see how they do. But the problem is in all the literature from around the world, the longer you wait to have an ACL reconstruction, the much higher risk of osteoarthritis further down the line. So the literature supports an early ACL reconstruction rather than a later ACL reconstruction and also, unfortunately, increased patient age. So the older we get and we have an ACL reconstruction, there's a much higher risk of getting post-traumatic osteoarthritis. Other studies have shown similar numbers when you look at this in terms of the long-term consequences of uh, osteoarthritis. Another study showed at 12 years, 75% uh, of female soccer players had significant functional limitations, and 42% had symptomatic radiographic knee osteoarthritis. So this is a problem because when we're looking at soccer players, most of these are teenagers. So they're almost, at, they're almost in their 30s and they're already having symptoms from their osteoarthritis. And it's, and it's a big problem that we have to face. What's the function in osteoarthritis prevalence over time? You can see that patients who, who did have other combined injuries with it had a much higher risk of osteoarthritis. And other studies have also showed similar when we look at Mayanna Risberg and Lars Engerbretson's numbers. They're also showing that over time that these patients have a much higher rate of osteoarthritis as time goes on. So it's a big problem. We've also shown that bone bruises after these injuries, so it's the subluxation, and this is the pop that patients feel. 
It's not, they don't feel a pop from a torn ACL, they feel a pop from the bone bruise and the microfracture that occurs. And they're developing osteoarthritis often as seven years after these bone bruises. There's also been studies in our countries and other countries where they looked at, at biomarker expressions, and the biomarker expression shows that there's increased problems when you do have a ACL tear, including um, the MMPs, which have been shown to be very problematic. Here's some, uh, some pictures here showing this with articular cartilage staining with saffron and oil, and you can see that uh, when we're looking at one year versus greater than one year after ACL injury, there's a significant increase in the development of osteoarthritis from these biopsies. So ACL injury, unfortunately, does cause arthritis. We're not really curing it. We have to do something about it. So in summary, for post-traumatic osteoarthritis after an ACL reconstruction, it develops in more than 50% of patients by 20 years after ACL surgery. Unfortunately, it's in young patients, and that's why it's a big problem. And we really can't seem to stop it yet, so we need to do better with our ACL surgeries and figure out the cause of this. Thank you very much.